and we are on air. Hi guys, my name is Brianna and today I thought it would be nice if we had a chat about gender and sexuality. So let's get right into the video. So I've actually been thinking about making this video for quite a while now, but one, I didn't want to do it last year because of reasons I'll get into later in this video. And two, once I was ready to make this video, I thought I might as well wait till Pride Month. Happy Pride Month everyone, by the way. So I'm not exactly sure how I want to start this, which is pretty funny considering I've been thinking about making this video for a long time, but I think I'll start with some stuff about sexuality and get into gender later in the video. If you're only interested in one topic or the other, I will put a timestamp in the description of when I switch topics. So for myself, I came out as bisexual when I was in eighth grade. My exact coming out process was pretty bumpy and I don't think I want to get into the details of that here, but to keep it plain and simple. In school, I thought I had a few people I could trust and I decided to tell them and I ended up being severely bullied and because of things that happened after that, I ended up having to tell my family and I wasn't ready to tell them so it was really difficult for me. But needless to say, the point is I had my sexuality figured out when I was super young and yet I still ended up questioning my sexuality time and time again because sexuality is so confusing and there's no education and there's no one to turn to when you're confused and don't know what certain feelings mean and that is why I wasn't ready to make this video last Pride Month because I was going through a sexuality identity crisis. It can be really scary to talk about things while you're going through them, but I think it's important to talk about it after the fact because if someone who is in middle school or high school watches this video and is struggling and it helps them in even the slightest bit and they don't have to wait until they are out of school to go through those struggles and figure themselves out then that's fantastic because yes you will learn and grow and find out more about yourself as life goes on but to feel secure in certain identities at a younger age just makes you feel a way that's so difficult to describe but I guess I'll just say what makes you feel secure there's nothing wrong with not having an identity plenty of people do just fine not having an identity but I'm more so speaking about the people who are similar to me I I have a really hard time when I don't know something about the way I identify. Something about having a label on what it is that I feel and go through makes me feel so much better about the difficult parts of those things and I guess it just helps me number one understand what exactly it is I'm experiencing and number two feel valid in those experiences. You are still valid without an identity but the way it makes me feel for myself is that I need those kind of solidifications of what it is I'm going through. Now the reason I felt so confident of my sexuality at a young age is because I had always been told plain and simple if you like boys and you like girls you're bisexual and honestly the truth of the matter is I don't even remember who ever told me that. I don't even remember ever learning about gay people honestly I know some people have this moment where they find out what it means to be gay and they're like oh my god that's me I never had that I literally have no recollection of finding out that there's different sexualities it just kind of feels like I've always known but I didn't know about every possible sexuality I think I pretty much just knew gay straight bi and although I never acted on it all throughout my childhood I had crushes on girls 
And also, I wouldn't say I never acted on it. It's just I never publicly acted on it. So I've had like my fair share of childhood experiences with girls. But, you know, I never told my parents I have a crush on a girl. I never dated a girl. But I was boy crazy all throughout elementary school. So I think it was kind of a shock to many when I came out. But for me, I had always known. And from what I've heard in the queer community, that's really common to be kind of or rather I, I don't want to say queer community I want to say the, the woman loving woman community is that it's kind of common to be a little boy crazy when you're a kid and turns out you're queer but for me I had always known I have crush on a girl I have crush on a boy so I guess I'm bisexual I think when I started learning more at first First, it solidified things for me, and then it made them more confusing. So when I first learned what pansexual was, things clicked for me even more. And I felt even stronger in the fact that I'm bisexual. Because the way I've always understood it is that if you are bisexual, you like people of the same gender as you and people of other genders. Pansexual is the same thing, so the difference isn't in who you like, but how you accept experience those feelings. So if you're pansexual, the gender of the person you're attracted to has no effect on the way that attraction feels. But if you're bisexual, it doesn't necessarily mean you have a preference of this gender over this gender, but just that they are experienced differently. The gender affects the way you experience that attraction. And for me, that solidified me feeling like I was bisexual because the way I feel when I have feelings for a man versus the way I feel when I have feelings for a woman are so drastically different. And again, it's not to say that one is better than the other, it's just that the way the feelings are experienced changes completely. And I've never been able to quite put the words together to explain the differences in those feelings. So I kind of think unless you've experienced it, you don't really understand. But it does blow my mind sometimes to think about how other people don't have those different experiences. How whether it's a man or a woman or a non-binary, whatever it is, doesn't affect the way you experience that attraction. And that just kind of blows my mind mind. But although at first those differences in attraction made me feel more secure in my identity, eventually it caused more confusion. And I think this is what I really want to hone in on for people who are currently questioning their sexuality because I know how confusing it can be and when you have no one to turn to, you don't really know what to do or how to go about discovering who it is you truly are and what you identify as. And I also think this is one of the only major issues I have with the queer community on TikTok. And it's not everyone, but it's something I see commonly tossed around. I don't want to speak for everyone, so I'm gonna say specifically in my experience in being a queer woman on TikTok, I see many other women talking about their experiences as a bi- pan or lesbian and how they discovered their sexuality. And a lot of times in the comments of the bi women, I see people telling them, oh, you should read the lesbian master doc. You might not be bi, you might just be gay. And I see lesbian women talking about not just, hey, this is my experience, this is how I feel, but uh, if you feel this, 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 and this, you're not bi, you're gay. And the lesbian master doc is incredibly helpful in helping you figure out a lot of things about yourself, but it's not as cut and dry as it seems because certain questions on there you may experience as well even if you're not lesbian but you're bisexual. And people kind of pushing these bisexual women and being like, no, like you're not bi, you're gay, you're not bi, you're gay. It got me super confused because a lot of them I agreed with. 
in my own experience. I'm editing right now and I just wanted to clarify. I meant I agreed with a lot of the experiences these bi women were speaking about and the people telling them that they were gay is what was making me question. And I started to question, did I really have these experiences or did I convince myself that I felt those ways. And yes, oftentimes, as queer people growing up, we convince ourselves that we do want to do certain things to fit into the heteronormative way of life. But that's not always the case. A lot of times, it's a big mixture because, you know, you might be attracted to... Hello? Okay, love you, bye. What was I saying? As a kid, as a queer person, sometimes you might see a guy and go, oh, I'm gonna have a crush on him. And you convince yourself you have a crush on him because it's the thing to do. And sometimes you see a guy have a small crush on him and play it up. And as a kid, that was my experience. And I think it's because I did have a crush on those guys, but I played it up to cover my feelings I had for girls. Whereas for many lesbian women, they completely fabricated these crushes. And I think that is like one of the most confusing things about the lesbian master doc because they talk about, you know, being boy crazy, having a lot of crushes, and like a lot of times as a bisexual woman, it's not that you fabricated them, but you played them up. And I started to question if I was doing that in relationships as an older person, you know, not as a kid, but, you know, as a teenager, high school into college, was I playing up those relationships to cover up my sexuality? And I think the thing that made me start questioning it the most is simultaneously, I don't want to say I was in a relationship because it was kind of complicated, but I was seeing this girl, and at the same time, I don't want to say what platform because I don't want to say specifically who I'm talking about, but this creator that I watched and followed and liked, who identified as bisexual for a long time, came out as gay. And she talked about her experiences with men, being in long-term relationships with men, planning futures with men, saying she was going to marry them, and how she still loved these guys that she claimed to have loved during those relationships, but it's not the kind of love she thought it was. And hearing someone talking about that while experiencing one of the first serious emotional connections I've had with a woman was so confusing. Because like I said, as a bisexual person, I experience those feelings and those attractions to men and women differently. So being in a situation with a girl, it's so confusing to recognize, no, these are just different feelings, but it's still attraction, rather than getting in my head and saying, well, maybe this is what it's supposed to feel like. Maybe this is what love is like. Maybe I didn't love those guys. And it's so tricky because you get yourself convinced that you're not capable of being in love with a guy. And I fully came out as gay to my parents, to a few friends. I never said anything about it online, but I mean, you can see under my bi flag, I had switched it out to a lesbian one for a while, and I was just really confused. And I think it's not anyone's fault, but the things other people say affect how you view sexuality and can take someone who is so certain of who they are and send them spiraling. And I think that for me is why it's so important for me to talk about this because at the end of the day, being past that situation with that girl and looking back, I was able to recognize that it's not that that's what it's supposed to feel like, and that's real connection, and my other connections weren't. It's that they're different experiences that feel completely different, and it's not fair to put them side by side and say one's real and one's not. 
But I had myself convinced that I was not capable of having an emotional connection with a man. So when some time passed and I started seeing my current boyfriend, it took me a little bit to recognize that I was falling for him because I had convinced myself that I wasn't capable of that. I remember calling up my mom and talking to her about it and being like, do you think I should pursue this? Do you think I am capable of being in love with a man? Because I had convinced myself that I had never truly been in love with a man, that I was lying to myself all those times. I had a two and a half year long committed relationship to a man and I was trying to convince myself that the whole thing was a fraud. And that's just not true. I was deeply in love. And although it's been confusing and difficult trying to figure out my sexuality, at the end of the day what I've learned is that you can find one overarching identity that you feel comfortable with and fall within. But because sexuality is so fluid, it's not always going to feel like it applies. And that's okay. You don't need to convince yourself that your past experiences are invalid or that future ones are going to be different. You find the identity you feel comfortable with and leave it at that. You don't need to send yourself into an identity crisis every single time something feels new or a little different. You're gonna have new experiences with people. You're gonna feel things differently. And that doesn't mean that the past ones weren't the way it's supposed to be. And that's not to discount any woman-loving women who the first time they kissed a girl, they said, this is how it's supposed to be, and they realize that they're not attracted to men. It's not to discount them. It's to say the women who feel confident in the fact that they're attracted to men don't let those new good feelings towards women convince you that those other feelings weren't real. And that's the most confusing thing about being bisexual. Because you have to discover for yourself that it's not that you're not attracted to one, it's that you're attracted to them differently. And that one fact that originally made me feel more secure in my identity is what sent me spiraling and confused and not knowing what to do and who I am. I think if we openly and honestly taught younger kids about the different sexualities and what it means to feel and experience those different sexualities, we would have way less people in their teens into adulthoods struggling so much because especially in your teens and early 20s, there's so much you have to discover about yourself. You shouldn't have to be discovering the one thing you should be taught about to know who you are. You know, there are so many people who grow up not even knowing knowing that it's a thing to be gay. And then they're 40 years old, finally find out that that's a thing you can be, and now they know that they are gay. Knowing is almost always more than enough to know if that's you or not. All you need to do is educate people and yourself on the different sexualities and different possibilities of attraction and there will be way less people struggling with their identity. But I think some people struggle with their sexuality not just because they can't figure out who they're attracted to, but because they can't figure out what they are themselves. And I have struggled with my gender, but it never quite affected my sexuality and I think that's why it took me so long to really start realizing that I struggle with my gender. I think this part of the video I've been ready to talk about for a little while but have been kind of scared to because I feel like many people don't understand. I think people are starting to understand that there's men, women, and something in between, and that you can also be transgender. But I think many people struggle to understand anything that's a little more confusing than that. So I haven't really even opened up about this to any family or friends. There's maybe I can think of three people I've spoken to about this. 
and I think it's important to talk about because I know other people struggle and if any of those people happen to watch this video they might find comfort in that community of people who experience the same things. Growing up and even until now I have always been very girly. I love dresses. They're my favorite thing to wear. I love jewelry. I occasionally wear makeup. I love high heels. I hate sports. I love the color pink. I just kind of always came off as a girly girl. And I think because of that, I never questioned if I was a girl or not. It was kind of like, this is what society views as a girl. The way I present myself lines up with that. I must be a girl. And somewhere in high school, I hit a point where I was like, gender doesn't matter to me. So I'll generally say I'm a gender, but I will let anyone and everyone refer to me as a woman. I will use she, her pronouns because because that's what I appear to be and gender doesn't matter to me. So why not go with what's easiest? And I kind of just left it at that for a really long time. And then I'm not gonna specify any details about this person, but a person in my life who was struggling with their gender. I talked to them and I said, you know, I don't always feel like a girl, but I don't want to talk about it or change the way I identify because I don't experience gender dysphoria. I don't experience gender dysmorphia. And I generally fall into what society views as a girl. And I don't want to invalidate anyone trans, non-binary, whatever they identify as and step on anyone's toes or take a voice away from them by speaking up on my own. And this person kind of told me, you know, your experience is valid and just because you don't have an extreme experience where you are born a woman and you feel like you're a man doesn't mean that your experience doesn't still need to be heard. No matter how far you stray from the gender norm, you still deserve for other people to hear and respect how you identify and for your voice to be heard. And they kind of told me, you know, what if someone else you love and care about was going through this and they came to you, would you tell them, oh no, I'm not gonna refer to you as they them because you might as well be a girl because you're close enough, so she her only. Or would you feel for their experience and treat them the way they want to be treated? And that kind of made me realize that just because my experience isn't severe doesn't mean it's not valid. And talking about it might help other people who are questioning or struggling themselves. So after that conversation, I changed my pronouns on all of my social media to she, they. I think it was still difficult for me at that point coming to terms with the fact that I feel like I fall under the non-binary umbrella, but the more time passes, the more I see people on social media, mostly TikTok, talking about their experience as a non-binary individual who mostly falls under the societal view of a woman and how they too felt scared to say anything because they don't experience dysmorphia or dysphoria. And that was so empowering to me to see other people feeling the same way. And I think it was also so confusing for me because there are plenty of times that I put on a pretty dress, I do my hair, I do my makeup, and I feel like a pretty little lady. And I want people to see me as a pretty little lady. But then there's other times that I, you know, I put on some nice pants and a button-down shirt and I feel like a they them. I feel androgynous and I want people to view me that way and I don't want them to view me as a girl. And I think the first time I ever truly felt, not like I want to be, but like I was non-binary, was when I cut my hair. I have had long hair my whole life. Even times it's been short, it's been short 
but not, you know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. And in September, I decided to completely chop all my hair off. It was completely buzzed on the sides and the back and just a little long on the top. And it made me feel so good about myself because I felt like I could dress a certain way and feel super non-binary, they, them pronouns and then other times dress a certain way and look like a cool girl with short hair, she, her pronouns. And I felt finally like I had more control over how the world viewed me, but I still didn't push it. I didn't tell many people that I felt that way because I didn't want to deal with any possible backlash. I'd rather stay in my own comfortability of finally feeling like myself and let family members call me whatever they want to call me and let friends call me whatever they want to call me or let people on the internet call me whatever they want to call me and I still don't think I'm going to make a big deal of telling people what they can and can't refer to me as because I am okay with she her pronouns like I said I made my pronouns she they but I think the only thing difficult about she they is people see it and say she is easiest to deal with and they don't want to learn or have to think about it so they see you as a girl you're okay with girl pronouns cool you're a girl in their eyes and they never use the they so i feel like the they is there for me but not for anyone else referring to me and i haven't really decided how much i want to push that but i do want to give a special shout out to my friend emily because in all of this she has been the only person besides the person i was speaking about earlier that i don't want to disclose who it is she's been the only person to care about what I identify as. After I changed my pronouns on my social media, she reached out to me and asked me, hey, I saw your pronouns changed. Is this what you want me to refer to you as? Are you still okay with me saying, hey girl, and stuff like that? And regardless of what the answer is, someone caring enough and asking you how you identify and how you want to be referred to as is so comforting and you feel so accepted and it helps more than I think she'll ever realize. I did not think I was gonna cry when I was making this video. <laughs> I guess this is just what's happening now. But also when I first cut my hair and I was trying new outfits and you know sending pictures to Emily and talking about it, she's just so supportive and no one else has been like that even the couple of people I'd also mentioned it to no one was unsupportive but it's almost like I might as well have never even told them because it didn't change anything like I said most people they still always use she her pronouns or just kind of act like it's not a relevant thing, something I never even told them about or spoke to them about. And like, I feel like they still view me always as a girl when I feel like, yeah, there's a majority of times that I feel like a girl, I want to be perceived as a girl, but there are so many times where that doesn't feel like me. And I think it's the same way as earlier and I said, you know, sexuality is a spectrum and it's fluid and you can have an overarching identity that feels like you but you're gonna get confused and question it when the fluidity changes in the moment. I kind of feel like it's the same thing with gender and I feel like overarching I fall under non-binary and it's just that fluidity of times of when sometimes I feel more like a girl and sometimes I don't. I think it's just so confusing to come to terms with that because I don't feel like a man. But I think even though I don't feel like a man, if someone ever referred to me like that, it would make me happy. Not because I want to be referred to as a man, but because I'm always referred to as a girl and I want to be referred to as they and it kind of balances it out almost. 
I remember there was one time when I had first cut my hair and I was out somewhere. I forget exactly what I was doing, but there was some little kid out on the street and they like called some guy's name. They thought I was that guy. And like I turned around and I was like, oh, sorry, like that's not me. And they were like, oh, sorry, like you looked like uh, so-and-so and like it was a guy. And it felt so good, even though I don't want to be received as a guy because I wasn't being perceived as a woman for once. And I think that is the one and only time I've ever had an experience where I was made aware that someone else was perceiving me as something other than a woman. And I think it's a big part of the reason why we need to normalize asking people what their pronouns are because someone can look and seem so feminine and not feel comfortable with she, her pronouns. And I just think it's something we need to talk about more often and normalize. And whether you feel the same way as me or not, I hope you got something out of this video, whether it's that you're valid or whether it's that you need to be more caring of what other people are going through and more accepting or it's that you didn't even know that there are people that experience these things and now you learned something. Whatever it is, I hope that everyone who watches this gets something out of it and I hope for anyone who's going through what I went through and am going through that this can help you feel like you're not alone and maybe help you figure out what it is you really are experiencing. But you guys can comment down below any questions and I will try to answer the best I can. It is such a confusing thing, sexuality and gender, so I might not have the right words to say for everything. And if anything was confusing in this video or gets misconstrued, I'm really sorry. I tried my best to be super concise and explaining everything but like i said you can just comment down below any questions and yeah that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one mm -hmm.